Hello everyone and welcome to the first video for this channel for 2023 which is going to be a video guide on Cubics. Why am I talking about Cubics now? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Cubics have been historically hilariously mistreated in Duel Links, receiving some of the worst archetypal skills ever conceived, either by skill locking the one card the entire archetype is based around, or just being, you know, bad, just really, really bad. However, for some reason, Konami decided to finally grace cubic players with some of the greatest cubic cards ever, including the one the archetype is based around. Which brings me to my next point, which is that Cubix is an entirely free-to-play archetype, with all of its key cards being event rewards at worst, but more often than not available simply by leveling up or dueling against Aigami and Serra. So without further ado, let's take a look at all the cubic cards, starting with the absolute greatest of them all, Crimson Nova the Cubic Lord. It's a 3000 beater that special summons itself by revealing three of the cubic cards in your hand, is unaffected by the effect of monsters with 3000 attack or less, gets to attack once again if it destroys a monster by battle, and burns both player for 1500 life point at the end of your turn. It's a fantastic OTK enabler, whether it clears your opponent's board or just burns them to death, and the absolute greatest reason to play the deck at all. If I had one negative thing to say about it, I'd say that its summoning condition means that you often have to commit to summoning it first and foremost, which leaves you vulnerable to open it back row. Still, it's way too good to pass. Next up, Dusa the Meteor Cubic Vessel. On summon, you get to send any cubic card to the graveyard, and as a quick effect, if a monster was sent to your graveyard this turn, you get to, to boost Dusa by 200 attack for each monster with different in your graveyard. That second effect is mostly irrelevant, but the first effect is so incredible for the deck that you can't go wrong by playing three Dusas in every cubic deck you're playing. Now for the card the archetype is designed around, sort of, Vijam the Cubic Seed. It's a level 1 with 0 0 stats, can be destroyed by battle, and can move to your back row and give a cubic counter to monsters it battles. Cubic counters prevent monsters from attacking, activating their effects, and in Duel Links they look like chibi Vijams, which I think is really cute. V-Jam can also special itself in your back row afterwards for repeated use. Keep in mind that the effect to move to the back row and give a counter is optional, so you don't have to leave your field wide open if you don't want to. V-Jam used to be accessible only through a rather mediocre skill, but Konami has finally decided to give us one copy to use freely, so, you know, let's actually use it. Whether our deck is going to be focused on seeds or not, it's not about inclusion. Next, let's take a look at one of the sub-themes of this archetype, the Cubic Beasts with Dark Garnext, Blade Garudia, and Buster Gondil. Each can be special summoned by tributing 1, 2 or 3 Cubic Monsters respectively, and gain 1000, 2000 and 3000 attack when summoned this way. Blade Garudia gets to attack twice during each battle phase, and Buster Gondil gets to attack thrice. They also each float into seats from Grave and search the next member of their lineup, except for Buster Gun Deal, which floats into any three cubic monsters and searches any cubic cards from your deck or graveyard. Um, I'll make it simple for you, just forget the first two. They're too weak to really accomplish anything, while Buster Gun Deal is a pretty good beater on its own, regardless of which version of the deck we are playing. And yes, there will be several versions. The next sub-theme is the Cubic Kings with Gyragile, Vulcan Dragni and Indira Doom Vault, which follow the same basic principle as the Cubic Beasts, except they only get 800 attack per tribute instead of 1000, and have a 800 burn damage on summon effect instead. Again, I'll keep it short. Gyragile is a neat little burn option that doesn't eat up too many resources for a mediocre result like the other two, and for this reason I feel like it's the only one worth playing out of the three. Actually a uh, last minute addition to this video, the new cubic skill kinda makes Injira Doom Vault a pretty good option of its own, we are going to discuss this a bit later, but uh, forget every negative thing that I said about it up to this point. Now for the cubic back row, starting with the continuous spell Cubic Karma. On activation, it allows you to dump any number of seeds to give a cubic monster you control 800 attack for each seeds dumped this way, and then it can send itself to the graveyard after a V-Jam is summoned by the effect of the another cubic, 
so you have your opponent's life points. The best part of Karma, however, is its last effect which allows it to banish itself from your graveyard to search any cubic monster and it's not even a once per turn effect. Karma is basically the card you're gonna send off of Dusa 99% of the time and you'd be foolish to not play the 3. Next up is another continuous spell, Cubic Dharma. As a continuous spell, it makes sure you take no battle damage from battles involving your cubic monsters and also allows you to discard a cubic card to draw one card per turn, which is neat. Also has a once per turn graveyard effect banishing itself to retrieve any cubic monster in your graveyard. It's another great card and a way to potentially dump karma stuck in your hand and pretty great to get your one copy of Crimson Nova should it somewhere get dealt with. All in all it's another fantastic 3 of. Now for the trap cards, Cubic Mandala is a continuous trap that can only be activated if you control a cubic monster and by targeting monsters your opponent used to control in their graveyard that were destroyed, not just sent, destroyed uh, this turn. It um, revives them and makes their attack 0 and gives them a cubic counter, then negates all monster effects your opponent activates, even those in hands or graveyards, until all of these monsters leave the field. If this seems situational and convoluted, it's because it is. Don't bother with it. Cubic Ascension is a battle trap that summons a Vijam from deck, makes your opponent attack it instead of whatever their attack target was, and we all know how that's gonna end up for them. It can also banish itself from your graveyard if you have 2000 less life points than your opponent to summon up to 3 Vijam from hand, deck or graveyard. A session is neat if you play a certain skill that gives you more than one Vijam to play with, but probably not worth playing otherwise. And the last cubic card we have in Dwellings for the time being is another normal trap, Cubic Causality. On activation, you get to distribute cubic counters without targeting to enemy monsters on the field up to the number of cubic monsters you controlled, which is really cool. It also gets an additional graveyard effect, allowing you to banish it to deal some burn damage every time a cubic monster destroys a monster with a cubic counter, which makes OTKing even easier, even if that burn damage is going to be halved. That second effect is a bit overkill, but the first effect is incredible, even if all you're getting out of it is a single negate, that's still enough to mess up a lot of decks out there. Definitely play 3. Now for the deck list, this first one is based around the skill Dimension Summon, which basically allows you to cheat any level 4 lower cubic monster, which is in this case is going to be Buster Gun Deal, and give it attack equal to its level times 500, which in this case is going to be 2000. Buster Gun Deal does retain the ability to attack thrice, which is why it's better than Indira Doom Vault, which won't be able to burn because it, it is not special summoned. Your main focus is still going to get to Big Bad Crimson Nova ASAP and OTK, and though we can't play any non cubic cards in this list, we do have access to enough decent cards to make it work. The second deck list is using the Cubic Seeds skill, which adds 3 V jumps to your deck. We are allowed to play up to 6 non cubic back row, and my focus here is mainly on, you know, back row removal, MST, Storm. You can play any back row you feel like, really, but you can't go wrong with Storm, which also helps you clear Dharmas and Karmas on the field so you can use their graveyard effects. Do keep in mind that playing too many tech cards could result in being unable to have enough cubic names to summon Crimson Nova occasionally, though. And the third and incomplete deck list is focused on the skill Emperor Advent, which probably deserves a mention. It's basically a triple summon from end or grave, ignoring summoning conditions, in order to then summon Indira Doomvolt as a 4800 attack beater that still gets the burn damage. Two things really noteworthy here. First up, it's mistranslated, meaning you can actually summon monsters and activate monster effects so as long as you do it before activating the skill. And second, the best part about this skill is not what's on it, but what's not on it. No restrictions on which card you can play, meaning you're actually allowed to play non-cubic monsters, back row and even an extra deck. There's one monster in specific that I really look forward to playing with this skill, and it's Summon a Monk. In case you've never seen it before, Summon a Monk is a level 4 that allows you to discard a spell card to special summon a level 4 monster from deck. It's a soft once per turn, meaning you can theoretically summon several monks and activate each of their effects as long as you have spells to discard. And speaking of spells to discard, do you remember that our continuous spells Karma and Dharma have graveyard effects that are pretty beneficial to us? If that wasn't even good enough on its own, yes, we can send Karma to special Dusa, then dump another Karma with Dusa to get two searches in one turn. This card is going to be absolutely insane for Cubics once it's released. Pros and cons of the deck. 
for the time being at least. As I've mentioned before, this deck is completely free to play and does have some potential. The newly added Crimson Nova makes it pretty easy to OTK with, and the cubic back row makes the deck pretty consistent and reliable. Plus, there's always going to be bad players who won't take their time to read Vijam, foolishly attack into it, and then make a thread on Reddit to whine about how broken cubics are or something. As for the cons, well, the deck is a one-trick pony kind of ordeal, and the issue with those is that they tend to lose to disruption pretty easily. It's kind of like Galaxy Eyes in that regard, being a glass cannon deck that absolutely falls to monster disruption and graveyard eight, both of which are really common nowadays. All in all, Cubics are a great free-to-play deck to climb the ranks as a new player, as long as you, you know, took the time to unlock and max out Aigami and Serra beforehand, but it's too one note to really outperform the current or future top dogs of the metagame at large. This being said, there's still a lot of potential behind the new Emperor Advent Scale that I'm certain will become the definitely best cubic skill in the upcoming month. And that's it for the video! Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. This is the first video of the new year and I uh, wanted to get it out as soon as possible. I actually started working on the script in 2022. <laughs> um, there's a picture of my cat again. I took more pictures of my cat and you're going to see a lot, a lot more pictures of them across the years, so make sure to stick to the end every time so I can remind you to, you know, comment and like and subscribe if you have not already. Share this video with your friends if they play Duel Links, and even if they don't, it's probably interesting anyway, right? Probably not. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.